Here we go. So yeah, do we want to do our uh, community votes first or our personal? What are we doing, Brett? We're doing... Were we supposed to include ours in the fan vote thing? I don't know. <laughs> I, I filled out okay. the form. I did too. Today. <laughs> I it's, didn't. So okay. there you go. We have a nice mix. It's the Fanboy Awards. Okay. So we'll do the community, what everyone voted for. Everyone? Like the entire world? The entire world voted for this. Seven billion votes, baby. Um, what? I thought they were all dead like in Midnight Sky. <laughs> Well, yeah, the entire yeah. world. All seven people. All one pe- yeah. people. <laughs> Sorry, I'm opening it up so I can see uh, a nice graph version. Versus... No, that's not what I wanted I'm to so do. I'm so pissed that my spreadsheet broke. Okie dokie. It's loading. I promise. I'm not just loading. stalling. Loading. Loading. We're yeah. going to give out some fanboy awards. This is going to be dope. It's loading. Not lying. <clears throat> Well, I'm glad I'm not in control of that this year. I can just relax in my home. That's all right. You get to run in the my Oscar room, show. I guess. I should probably stretch for that because that's going <laughs> to be. <laughs> and the best movie is La La Land again. La La Land. Cool. I don't know what's going on. Technical difficulties. It all broke it. Did. We're good. Here we go. Yeah, I was going to say, my, my spreadsheet broke. The responses broke. Okay. So uh, we had three categories. We had movies, video, TV shows, and games, video games. Um, we asked people to submit their top three favorite movies um, and their favorite performance uh, in a movie. So we'll go through that first. Um, <clears throat> we didn't have any consensus in the third place movies um but we had a nice variety uh we had wonder woman 1984 soul weathering with you uh which is an anime i'm i haven't seen it uh palm springs guns akimbo (laughs) hamilton uh promising young woman luke was that you (laughs) yeah that was me and uh and scoob so thank you for those of you who um Did Scoob come out last yeah. year? Yeah. Twenty twenty. That was like the like February the, or March movie. That was a HBO Max <sighs> premiere. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot about that movie. Wow, I never saw it. Um in the second favorite movie category we have uh, a little more consistent consen- consensus actually. Um, we had someone mention The Greyhound. I really enjoyed that movie. Soul makes another appearance. Soul, clearly uh, a good movie this year. Um, Onward, Pixar, another Pixar movie. Pixar was balling in 2020. They were. Uh, the Invisible Man. Yes. Great Such movie. a good movie. Yeah. Um, I actually think it's my number three. It's my number four. Uh as you can see, I didn't fill it out. Otherwise, it would have been in the third place movie slot. Um, Hamilton. And then, so for our ones with multiple votes, Birds of Prey got multiple votes. Um, that's one that I think a lot of people slept on. That was um, my number two. Just because it was, it kind of came out right as the pandemic was happening. Yeah. And it's R-rated. Um, we had the Joker last year be a, a DC film that was already that did very well, but it's this is a very different movie than the Joker. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but then the second place movie with the most votes, Palm Springs. Nice. Um, which I love that choice. That's. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. Good. Good movie. That was my number two. Nice. Yeah, I, it's that's high up there. That may be like four for me. I think. Um, I talked about that a couple episodes ago. Um, on to our 
favorite movies of the year from our community. The, what the fanboy community? The fanboys and fangirls out there. <laughs> uh, we have some new ones. Oh, actually, we have some old ones, too. Some ones that can, uh, were mentioned before. But for a first place movie that I, that I don't think we mentioned in the second or third place columns, um, Enola Holmes, which ironically, anytime you spell Enola Holmes, uh, it auto corrects to Ebola Holmes. So <laughs> <laughs> it Ebola it's Holmes? Ebola Holmes, yes. but I understand it's actually supposed to be Enola Holmes. But Ebola Holmes sounds like that. a great spoof movie. <laughs> That's the, uh, yeah, yeah. I got Ebola Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had Tenet, which hadn't been mentioned uh, previously. Um, a movie that I think had a lot of potential and for me at least kind of fell short um but glad people enjoyed it when i did my rankings that was further down than i thought it would be yeah uh the old guard it's a netflix original movie that movie has a crazy fan base yeah and it's yeah 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 and i actually enjoyed it quite a bit yeah that's pretty good definitely not my top three but yeah no it's good it's a good action movie um the sound of metal Tyler's the only wonder, person who has ever I wonder who that was. seen this, so that was Tyler's. Uh, <laughs> actually, The Sound of Metal got two votes. Tyler, someone yes. else agreed with you. Dana did not watch that movie with me. I just want to clarify that. So that's I think awesome. I, I think I know who that is, and I think it's the person who recommended that movie to me. Oh, there we go. Um, another one that just got one vote, uh, Weathering With You. So Weathering With You getting votes in multiple categories. So we got some anime fans out there. I need to look that up. I, I love that. Not heard of that. Um, another movie that got multiple votes, Hamilton. Uh, one that we mentioned previously, and then um, whoa, sorry. No, you're fine. I just looked up the synopsis of Weathering with You. That sounds awesome. A high school boy who has run away to Tokyo befriends a girl who appears to be able to manipulate the weather. Oh, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Love to check it out. Clearly one that we slept on. Yeah, seriously. Um, and then the the last one I'll mention, they got also got multiple votes, Birds of Prey. Nice. So I think between like second and third place, Birds of Prey got the most votes. Hamilton got the second amount of votes. Oh, no, Palm Springs actually tied with Birds of Prey. So... Palm Springs and Birds of Prey are kind of the community's uh, favorite movies of nice. the year. They get a fanboy award. They get fanboy awards. Um, Love it. And real quick, just I let's just go down with our personal ones as well. Okay. Uh, since we're here, uh, Tyler, you said your your favorite there was uh, the Sound of Metal. Sound of Metal. Um. And it's really funny, you know, when I look at this because it's my number one ranked movie, but it's a fanboy worthy. Mm -hmm. Um, Mostly because I understand that those kind of movies aren't for everyone. Um, You know, it's it's R rated, and rightfully so. It deals with some pretty mature concepts. It's you know, deals with addiction things like that, and some people just don't like that stuff. Yeah. Um, I do think we'll be hearing about it when the Oscars happen. And uh, I'm hoping that it's got some nominations. It's, yep. It's incredible. Yep. Luke, what was your favorite of the year? Um, my top three were Birds of Prey, Palm Springs, and then Promising Young okay. Woman. Nice. Um, Birds of Prey was... Heck, it might have been the first or second movie I saw in theaters mm-hmm. this year. And I don't think anything was ever better than it or topped it plus i saw it in theaters which is just always a better experience in general um it's really funny it has super good performances and it has got some of the best and cleanest choreographed action i've seen in a comic book movie um yeah it's really really good plus it was a it was a new director which i think is really cool Really hope Kathy Ann can come back for another one. I know that was one of my predictions mm-hmm. too. That one was that, 
yeah that was a hopeful prediction fingers crossed um but yeah it's 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 one of my favorite dc movies and my favorite dc in my favorite movie this year also rare for me there's always some oscar movie that comes out at the last second that's like and that's my favorite yeah movie. yeah that happens with the last too. year was 1917 yeah um it's it's really rare for me to have a be my number one so that's exciting too yeah and and i didn't it, for my top three it was birds of prey at two and then hamilton at three yeah yeah for me it was hamilton at one i think that for whatever reason like it's a phenomenal play and i think they really captured that essence well for the for the filmed version i know that there's some like discussion around like it, w- it won't be a, a it won't be eligible for academy awards which i think is weird but i'm more or less okay with um uh, but like from a purely like yeah that's it's still a movie like yeah i i was singing those songs for weeks and i'm usually not the musical kind of guy like oh i still listen to it <laughs> la la land's not my jam but like, I, oh i watched that last week i didn't even mention that <laughs> um but yeah i great great uh cast great music great everything uh birds of prey was my number two um if i had to be like a clean like this was made like as a film and not as a play birds of prey would probably be number one Mm -hmm. but I, i consider hamilton worthy of that spot um and then the invisible man was my number three nice so I think I'm the only person here that was like, yeah, I'm not going to count Hamilton. Um, but I do not discount anybody putting it anywhere on their list. Yeah. Um, it it was it was filmed. It was released on Disney Plus. I would consider it a movie. But for me, it's just that it came out in 2015. Mm, sure. Is when it was originally re- like made. Yeah. So it's like, eh, there's so much gray with it that well, i'm just know, not gonna what, put it you're gonna dis- discount um the new mutants from any 2020 awards yes because i didn't see it <laughs> 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 um but i i won't tell anybody no you can't put that on your list yeah no i won't tell anybody that but good um all right Freaking good. <laughs> so let's talk about favorite performances um, I don't think there, uh, we do have a little bit of agreement in here. Uh, we have Tom Hanks and it's not listed what performance he was. He was Tom. What movies were Greyhound. Tom Hanks? The Greyhound. Yeah. That's probably the, yeah. Yeah. Tom Hanks probably from the Greyhound. Um, Andrew Rain Rannells in the prom, a movie I did not see. Yeah. Uh, Riz Ahmed from the sound of metal. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, that one's me. I assume that's Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the protagonist from Tenant. Um, I think he was good in that movie. He did a fantastic. Uh, John David Washington. Uh, John David Denzel Washington. Yes. <laughs> uh, did do really good with what he was given. Um, yeah. And compelling actor. Can't wait to see him in more things. Uh, Chadwick Boseman in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Luke, that's yours. That was me. Yep. Yep. Um, that. Oh, I did watch a movie this week. Did you watch Ma Rainey's Black nope, Bottom? Nope. I watched The Five Bloods. Oh, nice. That's a really good movie. That movie's really good. That movie's really good. Delroy Lindo is incredible. Yep. I think the only knock I would give that movie is how it turns into a weird action movie in the last. Like oh. <laughs> ten minutes, <laughs> but it is so good. Delroy Lindo was my number one until. Oh, for sure. Now he's oh, it's crazy. Now he's he would be my number three because I'd put Carrie Mulligan at two. Mm. Yeah. Um. Oh, we did have another Riz Ahmed sneak in there at the last minute. It looks like I'm telling you guys, man, he's incredible in that movie. I guess he filmed it wearing um, like audible pieces, so he couldn't hear. Oh, that's awesome! So like when he was on set, he, he could really he, couldn't. he really couldn't hear people, which I it just speaks volumes to how authentic it feels. Yeah, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Um, Daniel Radcl- Radcliffe yeah. from Guns Akimbo. <laughs> Heck yes. <laughs> That's awesome. You still haven't seen that. Have I still haven't seen I that. I want to watch that with you. I, I really do. Yeah, we need to. We need to. Um, I'll come too. Just kidding. No. <laughs> well, you got what, another week? Two weeks? Probably I guess. longer. You're pretty pretty early Probably. on, my friend. Yeah. Um, I'm like three days in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then um, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda for Hamilton was one that got multiple votes as well. Um, really, really good performances. Uh, all those, I think, are worthy candidates. Um, um, Dude, this is... I haven't even seen everything, and I'm already, like, annoyed about how... Annoyed. How stacked it is this yeah. year. Oh, yeah. For, for awesome stuff. Yeah. Like... I've been hearing a lot about Vanessa Kirby in Pieces of a Woman. Oh, yeah. Pieces of a Woman. Yeah. I like to plural the word <laughs> woman. I can't help it. Um, yeah, I've that's that's probably the next one on my list. I heard she's like next level good in that. Yeah. 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 Mine, because I didn't, You we mentioned both of yours um, already in the list, but the, mine that I didn't mention, favorite performance was Elizabeth Moss in uh, The Invisible Man. Mm, she was really good. I think that's yep. that's just one of those performances that really stuck with me, and in a f- movie that's so focused on a single person, mm-hmm. because the antagonist for the most part isn't there. Yeah, she has to carry that film, and I think she does so well. Yeah, and it was yep. kind of like a return to acting for her, too, wasn't it? Because I think she hadn't done a whole lot. In a... No, she had been in the kitchen and doing handmaid tale, handmaid oh, tale. Yeah, handmaid right. tales where she was, I think, spending a lot of her time. But yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, so um, Lin Manuel and Riz Ahmed, I guess, kind of tie for our oh yeah for our fanboy awards there. So congratulations, I gentlemen. Hope, I hope that's not the last piece of hardware Riz Ahmed takes home. <laughs> Gosh, he's so good. Yep. Well, let's move on to favorite television series. We have we had a lot of TV shows come out this year, as we do every year. Yeah, um, I'm learning that there are more than just like the the three that are kind of like in the media buzz. Um, <laughs> so, one that came out the very beginning of the year that got mentioned in here that um, I'm glad got mentioned. Tyler brought it up at at dinner tonight um, when he got over here. Uh, was Hollywood? I don't know. Did you did you vote for that? Was that your vote? Or... It is okay. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I was I was doing the sheet and I was thinking, I was like, man, what shows came out this year? And so I pulled up a list of like all the new shows of 2020, which is a, a daunting list to look oh, at. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like going through it, and it was alphabetical, and I'm like, yeah, I watched that, I watched that, I watched that, and then I kept going, and I was like, holy crap, Hollywood came out this year. <laughs> Like, I thought that was a 2019 show, and I'm sure if you go back to our episodes, I raved about that show. Um, That show is anchored by such fantastic performances. Um, I highly, highly recommend watching that. It's it's an alt-history view of Hollywood if they would have let a a black screenwriter Mm -hmm. in earlier, and I I think it's worth checking out for sure. And uh, if you're you're from Wichita, like we are, uh, Hattie McDaniel is a part of the show too, which is really cool. That's a really cool played by Queen history. Latifah. Yep. Um, we have the last dance was mm-hmm. submitted. That was me. Ah, uh, nice. Yep. Or one of them. I don't know if other people did that. So, any any comments on that, Luke? It's the only show that I have rewatched this year. Okay. Wow. Um, y- you kind of mentioned that book, Tyler. Mm-hmm about it made me want to watch it how that dude views success i think if people watch this show <laughs> in a good way in a bad way both of those they'll be like i just am not trying hard enough mm. at anything no. michael jordan took everything personally and it fueled like somebody could would like 
give him 49 fries instead of 50 fries in his McDonald's ad or something. He'd be like, I'm going to score 80 points tomorrow night. Just like that. Obviously that didn't happen, but to, to watch somebody just dominate year after year, Mm -hmm. like he did. And to see his drive to just win and prove that he belonged there all the time and who went up against a lot, like, man, and, I think I was a lot younger when, the, especially on that second three peat. Mm. Like I was six years old, so I didn't really get to experience it. Yeah, man, the NBA was just different back then. It was different. I think sports fans will absolutely love it, but I I think anybody will get enjoyment in that show. It is so good. It's on Netflix and ESPN. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, one that I have not checked. Another one that I haven't checked out yet. Yeah, I haven't watched that. Um, so. But when I finished that book today, I was like, they kind of mentioned um, when they were training together, they were there was a camera crew following him mm. for his last season in Chicago. Yeah. And you're like, this book came out in 2013. So nobody knew when this was exactly going to come out. Mm. So it was kind of cool to hear it mentioned. Mm knowing that it's out now. Yeah. Um, so it made me want to watch it. So I'll probably be watching that soon. Cool. Um, we also have The Simpsons. Um, I'm, my guess is that since that's out on Disney Plus oh, yeah. now, that yeah. maybe, you know, it's a little more accessible mm-hmm. to people. So that's that's cool. Uh, a show with long history. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to see that it's still... Making Chicken. people happy. <laughs> Longest running show on television. Um, the Umbrella Academy, season two. Uh, Luke, I know you really enjoyed that. It was good stuff. <laughs> Another one that I haven't seen. I wonder seen. where it was. Um, the Boys, season two. Uh, mm. That one's pretty high on my list. Um, I think it had you know, some ups and downs, but yeah, that, that's just a fun show. Yeah, it is. Ultimately. Um, and then the two... That both have uh, multiple votes tied. Tied for first place, The Mandalorian, season two, and The Queen's Gambit. Um, yeah, I kind of saw this one coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, interestingly, Mandalorian's not as high on my list this year, which if you've followed us, that's probably not a surprise. Yeah. Um, but Queen's Gambit, I've heard nothing but great things about. and, and which, It's really good. <laughs> have I seen any of these? Uh, the boys... <laughs> The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. <laughs> but yeah. I and yet I've still watched twenty shows this year. Oh. So uh The Mandalorian and Queen's Gambit both get fanboy awards this year. Congratulations. Awesome. To you. Um the my number one of the late year is Ted Lasso. Um wait. Yeah, that's it this year. Mm-hmm. That's not a twenty nineteen. Yep. Yeah. Ted Lasso. Um it's like late summer. Yeah. That's great show. That's one of those shows. It just it hit me at the right time. Yeah. Um, I needed, I think, you know, six months into quarantine and, <laughs> or not quarantine, but the pandemic. Yeah. You just needed that jolt of purity and hope and joy. And that's what it gave me. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one that I'll mention as like an honorable mention, Harley Quinn. I love that show. I cannot wait for season three. Yeah. Give me more of that uh, animated Harley Quinn show. So good. Uh, my kind of honorable mention, I guess, that I want to mention real quick yeah. is uh, Haunting of Bly Manor. Mm, yes. Um, I love both of those haunting seasons. I just love how they're horror shows. But it's the horror isn't why you really watch it. You watch it for really the messages and the themes, the performances, the relationships that the characters build. And I think Mike Flanagan has such, he really knows how to nail his aesthetic with those shows. Mm. Um, as it being just, you know, the scary stuff isn't the ghosts. There's scary stuff. That's actually real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's super cool. Cool. Good stuff. Yeah. Tyler, do you have any honorable mentions? Uh, mine would probably be The Mandalorian. Okay. It just made... This is going to sound really stupid to say. 
<laughs> but it, it made Star Wars fun for me again. Um, and for that, I feel like I have to mention. Yeah. No, that's great. It just like reignited the kid in me. Yeah. Like. And that's so much what that series feels like. Yeah. Is just like, man, what if what if we were just kids sitting around with our with the toys telling yeah. our own stories and and it's but it's done in a way that's not super like it doesn't feel fan fictiony it, and it doesn't feel heavy handed yeah which I think is is yeah. also nice agreed Favreau and Filoni. Let them ride. They're doing good work. Yep. Let them They're do their thing. Doing good work. Yep. All right, let's move on to gaming. Um, I wonder if anybody can guess what mine was <laughs> or mine. <laughs> We had a, we had, oh, we did, okay, we, we do have a winner in this category, actually. Um, Avengers? Uh, yeah, no. actually. <laughs> Fun fact. Um, so, yeah, Hades. Tyler, is that yours? Yeah, that's mine. Okay. Yeah. Just so happens that it's the first one I read. I, I promise I'm not singling you out <laughs> intentionally. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> Um, no, super giant games, man. They did Bastion, they did Transistor, uh, another one that's only on PlayStation and PC called Pyre, and then they did Hades. And and Hades is like they it was their first time doing an early access game, and they took the feedback from the the player base and they improved it. And then when they released it, it's it's I don't like saying this, but it's it's a perfect game. It's literally a perfect game from performances. I mean, it was nominated for so many performances and it was nominated for music. It was nominated for game of the year. And this is a seven person studio. Like, I don't like that cannot be left out in mentioning that a game with made by seven people was nominated and up there with the big dogs like Last of Us 2 and Ghosts of Tsushima. And like, it's just crazy to me. And that game is just so fun. The loop is great. The story is told through death, which is really cool. Um, and it's a game unlike any I've ever played. Dope. Um, next we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Was this a 2019 game? I feel like this was a 2019 game. I don't remember. But someone played it for the Doesn't first matter. time in 2020. So we'll count it. I'm fine with that. Um, yeah, no, that's a good game. I've been, like Tyler was saying, he was replaying through it. I'm slowly making my way through it. Um, I, I beat it for a second time this year. I haven't picked it back up. Um, but yes, it is a very good game. It would technically land in the game of the year for 2020. It was November of 19. Okay, cool. So it technically lands in that window. Nope. Oh, awesome. Uh, next we have Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushima? Tsushima. Tsushima. I'm a bad at pronouncing things. All good. <laughs> um, Luke, did you play this one? I never got to it. Okay. And I'm Tyler's really upset played it, about though. that. No, no, none of us, none have, of us played have played it. it? No. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, the two PlayStation guys haven't played it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I ha- obviously haven't played it. I was too busy being obsessed with Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um yeah no i've heard really good things about it as well um valorant made it on this list that was the new game from riot 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 um a pc uh kind of what is competitive what is the next cs go type game um yeah that's really cool i know it's really popular on pc so awesome um we did have cyberpunk 2077 land on here um it's a good game we've you know talked about some of its shortcomings and and how it needs to improve but obviously it is still really popular it runs really well on pc i would say it even runs pretty good on next gen consoles um based on yeah. what luke has said and what i've heard um it has its moments but i mean a game that big is gonna have no matter right. what so right yeah so it's Clearly still what CD Projekt Red did was impressive and and well done to a certain degree. So pretty cool to see that on there. Um, <clears throat> Disintegration made it on here. This was um, actually, ironically, this will be, I think, my vote too. 
so this will be a game that gets multiple votes on this because it was like the only new game I played this year. I didn't play a lot of new games this year from 2020. <laughs> wow. Um, hey, at least you finally started Control so I can finally get off your back about that's that. That's right. I, and I am loving Control, but also not. How far are you in that? I haven't played it in a while, so whenever, whatever we talked last. I'm no. sorry. It's like, well, it's, I don't hate it on really me. Gets- it's so crazy, man. Like, that's one of those games where, like, I could not stop playing it. Yeah. Like, I, I had to beat that game because I had to know what was going to happen next. That's fair. That's fair. I, I really do enjoy social gaming, and so it's hard for me to just be like, I'll go play Control when I see Luke on, and Luke is always on, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Disintegration, I'll just talk a little bit about it since it, it's my pick. Um, a game that, that didn't get a lot of love, um, but I think did some really interesting things in terms of mechanics and kind of bridging that gap between RTS and uh, an FPS uh, game. Not, I don't have a ton to say, but I think it's it was really good. And, you know, not that like by pro- just because by, by proxy it, it being my only new game of the year, it gets it. I think it would still be high on my list anyways. Um, but yeah, one thing I'll mention for disintegration, cause we played the, the technical tests for it. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a really good job of integrating the controls into that and yeah. ma- in making that feel, um, and making it feel natural to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when I, I was a little s- spooked by the RTS first person shooter, you know, kind of mashup idea. And when we all played it, I, I had a blast playing the, the technical test. I mean, we were wrecking fools. Yeah. Um, but no, that's that's cool to yep. see that get, getting votes. Yep. Um, it wouldn't be a new year without a new, I guess not anymore, Assassin's Creed game. They come out like every other year now, I guess. But um, Assist, Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, got a nomination. Um, I think I know who voted for that. <laughs> and if Hades had not come out in 2020, I would have voted for it too. Yeah. 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 Uh, Assassin's Creed has, for the past couple iterations, really honed its craft in and been worthy of Game of the Year status, I think. Man, I tell you, Valhalla is... And, and I'm so glad it got recognized. That game's good. Like, I, you know, I, I played Origins. I played Odyssey. This one is different. It's just way better. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. Um, in, in, I would say, almost all facets. It's, wow. it's incredible. It, it's the best Assassin's Creed game I've played since probably 3. And 3 is not great. It's my favorite <laughs> one uh, just because I think it's cool fighting in the colonial times. But sure. It's it's incredible. Yeah. You know, they got rid of the stupid ship fights. <laughs> Huge bonus for me. I, I freaking love that. I hardly ever get in my boat. Um, no, oh man, Assassin's Creed. That was It was a... I don't want to call it a return to form because mm-hmm. it is in their RPG format, but it's... It's back to good. Good. Awesome. Um, we get a... Oh, another... Uh, was Hades a Switch? It wasn't a Switch Switch exclusive. and PC only. Okay, Switch and PC. Well, another Switch game, uh, oh, Animal man. Crossings. Yeah. Um, that does not surprise me that I got nominated at me all. Either. That came out at just the right time. Yes. It had a lot of fire under it um, for just... Being a social game when we couldn't be social. Yep. You could go visit other people's islands. So that's awesome. Perfect. Yep. Very cool. And then our winner of the 2020 Fanboy Award (laughs) for best favorite new game is The Last of Us Part 2. Luke, take it away. Well, The Last of Us games, specifically... The second one, since, I mean, that's one that won this year. But both of them have better writing than most movies and TV shows. And I just don't ever experience that in games, I feel like, ever. Like, there will be games. It's like, oh, it has good writing, good story. And the voice actors pulled it off really well. But it to me, it just, and I feel like I always emphasize this about it, too. At Naughty Dog, they go, let's write something really good, nail it to a T, and then 
we can start making a game out of it. Um, is that how they do it? No idea. <laughs> they might just have incredible writers who are really good on the fly, can pin something really good. Um, but the emotions they take you on that game are just, they really just wreck, just wreck you. Um, it's a game that improved all of its gameplay from the first one that came out in 2013, 14, 15? Right when the PS4 came mm-hmm. out, whenever that was. 14, I believe. Um, yeah. So all, it was just lots of gameplay improvements. Um, and then I think it's really cool, and it gets so much flack from all the haters for it. But the fact that you play two sides of the story, mm. you you play as what is to consider to be the villain. And it's it's a really, really well done story about there's two sides to every story. Everybody's going through something. And it's it teaches you about empathy. And something we could all use so, a little more of in 2021. Yes, um, that is for sure. And it's 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 so good. Once people get if they get a cheap PS4, um, now those are cheaper. If you get a PS5, I know there's a next gen games coming out, but those are the two that you need to download. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Also, it's I think it's really cool, too, that like a triple A studio can can craft a story mm. that personal yeah because i think a lot of times we see those those big triple a games get a little uh un, un or yeah not they're, they they're less personal buster. they're more like here's like a big idea it's big set pieces and... yeah but we're not yeah. going to give you this intimate story or or for whatever reason or you know a lot of games these days kind of tend to tread towards the you create your own player and you're and so we're it's kind of a generic shell of a character yeah and so Mm -hmm. it's cool yeah you're right to see those games that are really still like hey we're gonna like we have something to say and this is what we're saying yeah yep so any honorable mentions for you guys i know you didn't didn't really play a lot of new games this year so i mentioned mine would be assassin's creed valhalla if i had to Uh, mind cyberpunk Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. <laughs> if I had to pick a third, it'd be Star Wars Squadrons. I did play Squ- Star Wars Squadrons. Yeah. That is good. That's a good game. It too. is a good game, and it it's game. it's something different that yep. we haven't had in a while. Yep. Yeah, I did play a couple. There I probably go. played some other games on Game Pass that I've just forgotten for whatever reason. Hey, man, January twenty eighth, the medium. <laughs> I'll, I'll play it. Don't I, worry. I think that game looks really sick. Dude, it's it's a. Yeah, it's already downloaded on my Xbox. I'm just waiting. Nice, nice. I'm so excited. I, I think download that too. I think. Yeah. Um. My yeah. My honorable mention: Cyberpunk. Obviously, it's a game that has a lot of problems. Got a lot of drama around it, but it's still a really fun game. Nice. Got a lot of cool stuff that you can do in it, and it's it's an awesome world. So. Very cool. Well, then let's move on to our last category which is favorite ongoing game <laughs> um we've got a couple at least one game in here that i wouldn't consider an ongoing game but uh we'll mention it because someone felt like it was worthy of being put down which is uh breath of the wild <laughs> um whether that's something that they're still playing or if it's something that uh they're playing for the first time this year that's cool breath of the wild's a great game it is so, mm. um, yeah, we also have one on here that I'm, it's very specific, Halo 2 PC from 2007. <laughs> and originally I thought, I saw Halo 2 and I was like, ah, MCC. No, this is like very specifically the 2007 version. Also probably not something I would consider an ongoing game, but I'm glad That's someone's awesome. still having fun playing Halo 2 PC on their 15 year old Windows Vista machine. We should all re download the Halo Combat Evolved demo that you can still play Capture the Flag on Blood Gold. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know whose answer that. Oh, yeah. All right. It was me. It was Luke. <laughs> no, it's not anyone I know or Luke knows. 
Oh, okay. I think you know them. Okay. We'll talk about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got World of Warcraft is on here. Um, that doesn't surprise me. That's a game that consistently brings players back uh, with, with new content or, yeah. or revised they content. They had a huge uh, drop last year. They had the classic, World of Warcraft classic last mm-hmm. year. And then they had their next big expansion at the end of the year. Ah, okay. Like in November. Okay. So that makes sense. Well, and so then we've got an interesting thing that's going to happen. Because we only have two other... We have we have lots of votes. We clearly have a a a, a gaming you know type niche here yeah. that we that we like to represent, and that is um, Destiny Two and Apex Legends. Yep. Now in the spreadsheet in the votes, Destiny has four votes. Someone wrote Destiny, and I'm guessing they mean Destiny Two. I know. Mm. Is that is that yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. Uh, Apex Legends has three votes, but I'm going to bump that up to four because it's my vote. We got two winners. So we get two winners. Um, I love it. Luke, I assume you voted for Destiny 2. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you want to explain yeah. a little bit why you think it's why it's your current uh, favorite game? Other than something, say something different than you haven't said the last 14 50, weeks. 50 weeks. <laughs> Um, how about this? I play that game so freaking much <laughs> that like, it's where I put like all of my gaming hours into yeah. now. Yeah. I played three games this year. <laughs> Last of Us, Cyberpunk <laughs> and Destiny. Nice. Um, and even they, they can have a, wh- whatever you want to say, how Beyond Light was with its content. The gunplay, the space magic, it's always fun to me. Yeah. It will always be fun to me. Um, but, yeah, I I just love playing it. I, I can have nothing to do. I'll just go to Europa and run around, and it's just soothing music and <laughs> shoot some facts in the face. That's awesome. Or in the body, <laughs> depending. <laughs> That's a good point. you got to shoot him in the body to get that crit. That's right. That's right. Uh, Tyler? You want to speak on behalf of yeah, Apex? I, I voted for Apex Legends. Um, look, I think Apex Legends is a perfect combination of, of a few things. Um, gunplay is incredible in Apex Legends. Um, the pace mm-hmm. of Apex Legends is really good. And I don't mean the gameplay pace. I mean the pace of how you can get in, you can do some things, you can get out. I have 30 minutes to play. Yeah. Okay, what can I do with 30 minutes? I can play two, probably two matches. Maybe more if I'm dying early. Um, <laughs> if you hot drop. You know, and, and I, I talk about this a lot with battle passes that are predicated on time. Mm-hmm. This game does a really good job of balancing time and challenges and giving you a slow drip of challenges so that you can constantly um, level up your battle pass. Like, yep. Nick and I play this a lot together. Um, and this season, we were kind of late to it. Like, we didn't really play it a lot at the beginning. We were playing a lot of Destiny. Um, and we just weren't spending the time on it. Well, we both recently were like, crap, the season's kind of closing. We need to get on it so we can finish up these battle passes. And, uh, you know, we're pretty close to, both of us are pretty close to completing them now. Yeah. And and it it comes from, it gives you attainable challenges that you can level this up. And I just think that's important for longevity. Yep. Which is why I give it my vote for ongoing. Um, Destiny 2 is definitely a close second, though, because I think what Destiny has been able to do since becoming a free-to-play game um since having a rough start and being able to, to you know circle the wagon and get that thing going in the right direction, um, it, it's wildly impressive. Uh, Tyler, you took the words right out of my <laughs> mouth. Um, I feel the exact same. It was so nice to, the other week, hop back onto Apex and be like, just blasting through Battle Pass levels. Yeah. I couldn't do that in, I don't think, any other any other game that has a battle pass and especially not like destiny Two, because destiny is it's predicated on xp mm-hmm. which is just pure time and there's yep. not necessarily challenges there's bad company that yeah. wait but even then like i'm limited in the number of bounties i can get mm-hmm. um the challenges that apex gives you carry over throughout the entire season so yeah. i can be completing things from week one in week 13 yeah um and i just think that's so 
player focused yeah. and positive. And even though, I mean, they, at the beginning of the season, they had a little snuffu with like. Yeah, they tried to change some how, things up. Yeah, yeah, how much time was really required was a little high. But they've kind of brought that back down. They fixed it really quickly. They didn't wait a season and say, yeah. oh, no, like, okay, we're, you know, last season was a little rough. They were like, week two. Boom, yeah, we made they, changes. They were like, we did. We grossly overestimated yeah. this. Uh, we fixed it. They gave people everybody like ten battle pass levels. Like, yep. they really worked to write it right then and there. Yep. Um, um, so yeah, that's that's why it gets my game of favorite ongoing game. Yeah. So congratulations again to they're multiple both. winners this year. <laughs> and they're both great yep. games. Will, they are both great games. I will also say, um, forgot to say this. Um, Destiny also in the past year has released my favorite Destiny thing, which was the Prophecy Dungeon. Yes, um, yeah, that dungeon is, is really good. Sweet, <laughs> really good. Mm-hmm. I I still don't think there's a game that does. Uh, I mean, you can maybe maybe say Destiny's PvP has not been great this season because of no balance issues i would say it's pretty bad actually but overall <laughs> in the life cycle of destiny i do think destiny has a really good balance of this feels good this player versus player stuff feels good and it has great pve stuff as well um the, yeah this season has been a little rough with stasis and whatnot but um yeah overall two two very very deserving games Mm-hmm. Um, that wraps up our awards. Uh-huh.